it was um, uh, an historic day yesterday when the news came across our desks and indeed the talk around the city was that uh, Bishop John Buckley will soon retire and he's passing on uh, the mantle of bishopry, if that's the right term, uh, to Bishop-elect Fintan Gavin uh, from Dublin. Um, and Bishop John Buckley at the age of 79. Um, I'm not quite sure what he will do in retirement, but let's ask the man himself. He joins me, he joins me by phone because off to confirmations this morning, John. Isn't that right? Good morning, Bishop. Yes, Neil. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Well, what's the story? Uh, retiring. Why do it? Why? I mean, there's many years is, left on the clock. That's right. When you, when you reach a certain age, you're asked to, you know, to step down for administrative work. That does not mean that you can continue on a little quietly, you know, in, in uh, whatever time the Lord allots to me. So it's, 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 you know, I often say that I don't, I don't like, I don't like the, the word retirement, I, I, retirement itself. You know, I think, uh, you know, you, you, you step down, but you still try to, uh, to try, try to help people in every way. Okay, it, co- it comes at a certain age then that the Vatican insists upon it. Is a bishop? Yes, the Vatican yeah. insists on it. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. It's a decision by Rome. That you're you're asked to you know to hand over administrative work to to a new man. And you were saying yesterday, talking about the new man, that there are two people in Ireland: one, the people from Cork, and the others who wish they were from Cork, isn't it? Yes. Well, so Cork people say. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get we're going to get a bishop from Dublin, is it? For, for, yes, he's a, a priest from Dublin, from the Dublin Archdiocese. He has great experience in running the Dublin Archdiocese. Uh, he was a, a chancellor of, of the diocese in Dublin, so he has good experience of, you know, a great experience of administrative work and so on in the, in, in, in the diocese of Dublin. Right, right. And you vetted him, and you've given him the thumbs up. Well, no, I don't have any say in the appointment to my successor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is he is he is he uh, is he handy at bowling or hurling or is he any extracurricular well, activity? I'm sure he'll certainly have to learn that. And once you come to Cork, you know, you have to find out something about roll bowling. I could possibly give him a few lessons. <laughs> you might give him a few lessons. You're As you still... probably know, Neil, I'm an expert in that you, game. <laughs> you certainly are, and you're still fit, healthy, hale, and hearty. But is yes. this a time for reflection now, Bishop? Well, I, when you look back, you know, you think of, you know, the, the goodness of people, the, the crosses they have to carry, what they have to suffer. You know, I often drop, I used to have to drop, it, I drop, and drop into hospitals and so on. You meet so many good people, you know, who have heavy crosses to carry. For example, the other night when I was visiting CUH, and I met this young man uh, from West Cork. I had a, a, a little accident with a bow machine. Uh, you know, part, three par, par, parts of his middle fingers, you know, he, he, he lost and they were removed, you know. Yeah. So you meet very sad cases. I remember a couple of years ago, this young man again from, he played with Douglas Hall in, in football and he had a serious knee accident and it necessitated, necessitated, necessitated the, 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 the amputation of, 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 of his leg above the knee. Oh. So I remember visiting him the night before in the hospital because I I known he was in, I'd called him a few times and I found him on the car door and I said, look after him in every way and you'll get your artificial leg and you'll be able to, you know, move around and everything like that. Bishop Buckley, he said to me, there are people down that corridor far worse th- off than I am, which I thought was lovely. So you, you, you see the goodness in people and their concern for others and the kindness of people. I have seen that in my work. I know, know, I know. And I know. you see the goodness of people, you know, all who are involved, say, in promoting games and sport for young people especially, because I think society needs to keep people like them today dedicated to helping others, and they do it with such great unselfishness and without any praise or accolades and so on encouraging you and that's so important for the young people today that's I don't know where you got all of the energy down through the years to do as much as you did because you were everywhere and everywhere and anywhere and you never refused if it was possible uh, a visit or uh, you know to, to attend an event but do, does it sadden does yeah does it sadden you at all though as, as we pay tribute to this morning that that people are turning away and continuing to turn away from the traditional church. Does that particularly young people? It is sad in a way, but still, uh, Neil, I I feel they still retain an affiliation with the church. No, they may not be regular churchgoers. 
but we see the huge attendance at special occasions at Christmas, Easter, Ash Wednesday. I was out in University College Cork now for the Ash Wednesday ceremonies, and the huge number of young people, students uh, from from the university who attended the four masses there, you know, to receive the ashes. So deep down, they still have the faith. There's this maybe you call it a nostalgic attachment to the faith of, the, of, of when they were growing up or the faith of their families, but they still have that affiliation with the church. And they may not, as I said, be a, you won't maybe see too many, and on a Sunday you may not see some yeah. of them, but they still, you know, I see them at removals, I see them at funerals, the number of young people who attend and support each other, the great solidarity that they have for one another. You but know? that's at special occasions or at times of funerals or christenings or commu- yes. confirmations or weddings, yes. but wouldn't you prefer them to be mass goers? I, mean, I would, uh, certainly, you know, because that's the great event to the Lord, so the last request that the Lord made to us, you know, to do this in memory of me and to attend the Mass is the, is the high point. Yeah. But hopefully, maybe in the years ahead again, you know, there's growing materialism in the world today. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It, it affects us all. But so it's, uh, but I still, this keep, still keep before the, the purpose of life, you know. Why are we here? Where are we going? You know, that find that prosperity alone is not enough. We'll not get complete happiness. You know, a brief sort of review of history so it you know, shows that in all the major religions, the, the people are asking these fundamental questions. Absolutely. You, you, you could be chasing commercialism and wealth and yes. things, and uh, and you know you, you you're never satisfied really. Yeah, you wonder what was that for, all about? Yeah, they're looking for something more satisfying than the consumer lifestyle. You know, deep down, but, but it's the goodness of people that's in people. That well, I suppose that's the reason for that. Is the the, the the most fundamental passage in the whole of Scripture? I think in the whole of the Bible, the most widely read book of the world. The fundamental pa- sentence is the Lord made us in our image. Yeah, you know, and. and uh, and, and yeah, and, and Jesus and his teachings, they were good things. But unfortunately, as you well know, uh, the legacy of many, many priests now uh, who at one stage could walk on water is that uh, a proportion of them did damage to people. Yeah, what are, you, what are your thoughts true. on that? Uh, that is certainly true. And, you know, the priest, the, the priest is in a special position of trust. And the people expect the highest standards of behavior from those in whom such trust is is reposed. But so it is a small minority, but it should never happen. It should. I, I, I've said that quite frequently. It should yeah. never happen. Yeah. That's why I took the child protection issue very seriously. We had our audit. I think it was about three years ago now, uh, by the uh, Ian Elliot, his chairman of the National Safeguarding Board, an independent body. And I think the result, the positive result of that audit, gave great reassurance here to the people of Cork. You know, it's, it's so important for priests to behave properly and to respect people. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why many people have turned away because of the it hypocrisy is, of it. It was a great scale. They gave great scale, a great, great, bad example. But I always talk about, you know, and you know, and I know, the many very good priests yeah. who are exemplary in every way. Their only desire is to serve the people as effectively as effectively. They must, they as must as feel possible. very saddened, though, because of the events of the last couple of decades and how it has affected their own beliefs and, and their own wishes and their, you know... Uh, they're it, calling, it, it if you very, like. It, it, was, it was very sad indeed because it certainly affected and, you know, gave great uh, scandal to young people. But I'm, I, I have seen too now that the church now has the best safeguarding practices, I'd say, in, in, in the country. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> in a, and that's underlined here in this diocese by the presence in every parish of a child safeguarding officer. Yeah. Do you think that, that, that then the church had to fall to be able to rebuild again properly? Well, uh, that's exactly what it's doing, Neil, you know. It's, it's, it's certainly getting its act together now and putting structures in place and doing it very effectively. Yeah, and, and not tolerating anybody that steps out of line. not tolerating this is not completely unacceptable. But, yeah, but if, if you want to, I mean, and this of course is something for, for Rome, but I'm just curious about your own thoughts on it. If you wanted to be all embracing, then you would recognise uh, gay couples, you would recognise divorce, you would uh, you know, you would recognise same-sex marriages, all of these kind of things. You would recognize women priests come on it's yes. time isn't it john <laughs> well that's in that particular circumstances you know there has been no discrimination we respect all people but the church we we have to follow our own teaching the teaching of the lord himself but having said that need you must have great respect for the dignity of of, of of other people and that is something that i'm constantly emphasizing no matter what our beliefs are we must respect people yeah. that's what the lord asks us to do respect people and 
you won't go wrong. Do you, do you think that in, in anyone, in maybe in the next 10, 20 years, 30 years, that any of those things that I've just outlined will actually change? Well, the, the, you know, it's, 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 it's not my teaching, it's not the Pope's teaching, it's the law teaching that we have to follow. But implement it, but, 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 but implement, you have certainly to teach it, but it, 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 implement it and teach it with great respect for people. No discrimination, utmost respect for the dignity of every human person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about your highlights then? Do you, do you recall any of those? Or is this, I do. Well, is this the time I, when yes, you're looking was, back? Well, there were several highlights. I, I had a, a, a long meeting with the late Pope, Saint Pope John Paul in Rome when I was appointed. He was an extraordinary man, uh, and uh, I enjoy, enjoyed very much the meeting with him. I told him that I was from Evlera, the parish of West Cork, and he was very friendly with a, a neighbour of ours, actually Cardinal Timothy Manning, who was out in Los Angeles. So he spoke at length about him. Another highlight was the funeral of Jack Lynch. As you know, Jack is held in special esteem here in Cork. I know Jack. Over the years, his brother was a, a curate in Inchigila, and I got to know Jack and Maureen. And uh, I recall to see him a few times in the, when he was in hospital in Dublin. And Maureen made a special request that I would preach at his mass. It was a great honour because we, we know the huge attendance at Jack's funeral and uh, the, the great respect that they had for Jack, both as it as uh, he, in Northern Cork as a, as a real teacher That's right. for, for, for several years. Great hurler. But a, a great man, he, he, Jack, too. It was was loved by the people and Jack himself loved the people so that certainly would have been a highlight you know there were other highlights uh, you know the winning the dub in 1990 was certainly a highlight <laughs> uh, uh, Skibreen winning the All Ireland back in the 1990 I thought of them all over the country will we ever win a double again John I wonder <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you would never know. You can never, you know, car, car come, can't come overnight. And, uh, the, full, the hurling talent is there, and I'm certain the football talent is there, and they are making a special effort now at this time. You know, yeah. they've put a new structure in place because car people love their sport. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we should support it. And Parky Cueve's a lot to be proud of, isn't it? And Parky Cueve is a lot. It's a magnificent stadium. And uh, they've said they will certainly really resolve the state of the pitch. This is a lovely time of the year for you now because you have communions and confirmations and you see all of these small children with full of promise and you know off on their world and life adventure yeah it is, and it's not an easy time for young people. A lot of pressure. I quite frequently visit post-primary schools uh, and follow their sports and so on. As you probably know, Christians went to the Hertie final and the All Ireland semi-final this year in Hurling, which is an extraordinary mm-hmm. achievement. Mm-hmm. Won, the, won the Munster Cup. But I find talking to these students, they're under great pressure now. So exams, leaving cert, intercept, and so on. So again, so important for families and for teachers, you know, the parents especially, to support them, to support them in every way. Mm-hmm. And confirmation, they, they're they're very important occasions in the lives of people, especially in the lives of the parents, the extended families, and the sponsors. You know, we never forget our confirmation day. Neil, looking back, and I, I know I, it. I, I, we have vivid memories. I of know our it, but, day. but unfortunately, that's there's a proportion. I, I make th- a special effort to be the best of form for those confirmation ceremonies. Yeah, you're always in the best of form, Bishop. I but un- <laughs> unfortunately, some parents are stepping back and stepping out from the ceremonies of confirmation and communion. Not, I don't find that very much here in. At, uh, no, I've been around for a long time I'll be doing out to can say today and I'm certain that the parents of the families that I will be confirming today will be there and it is a great occasion for them you know they make great sacrifices in sort of you know the expenses involved and all the rest of it preparing young people for confirmation but they do they make a special effort you know when you hand over the mantle has that happened now are you are no, you no longer no, bishop my role now it won't happen for another at about three months time I'm now the diocesan administrator I have, full, I have responsibility for the running of the diocese so it would be I bishop can, elect no. Finton Gavin would it? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, yeah. I can now make any major decisions. For example, if I decided to to uh, to build a swimming pool in my house here and turn the spa, I'd have to get special permission from Rome. <laughs> <laughs> you might plan on that in your retirement, maybe. But w- will you do anything? I mean, will you spend more time doing I, I, things that you want to do? I'll probably say a few, a few extra prayers, which is all part of our, you know, for a priest or a bishop. Secondly, I find Neil. I travel around a lot to um, nursing homes, and I find the people 
people there are very lonely. And we have quite a big number of nursing homes. Recently, you know, I visited the patients down in Bush Mount in Clannacilty. You know, some people wouldn't even have heard of that nursing home. Yeah. But the, the way the, the nurses and the ancillary staff and the doctors, the way they look after these people. And these people have made great sacrifices going back over the years. They rear their children in difficult times. And, you know, they say they're like you visit for a priest or a bishop or for a neighbour or a friend. But they're often, I find, I find them quite lonely. Mm. And it is great. I went the other day up, up in Ballino nursing home recently. Yeah. And I was walking down the corridor and uh, this lady had a walk along with a frame. And she bumped into me. She said, keep out the way. And the nurse said, so that's the bishop. And she, I don't know her age, Neil. 104. <laughs> <laughs> she had the right away then, bishop. Yes, she, she didn't see me. Uh, she was, oh, sacred. She says, I'm very sorry. <laughs> but the number of people the other day, I met a woman up in Old Lady Crown. I was dropping down from the church. And her daughter asked me to drop into the house. 106. It's My extraordinary God. the longevity of people Isn't now, you know. Amazing? It's not it amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, so okay. So, a lot so, of nursing well, homes. I have more time for doing things like that, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a that. lot of nursing. But you, 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 actually, would you, would you regularly go up to Cork Prison as well and visit the inmates there? I do. I, I again, I, I, there are very some, very some. The, the people there, the, the inmates and so on. I do I like visiting them and supporting them. You know, a lot of them I would know myself. You know, they would have been involved in sport and road bowling and so on. They quite regularly challenge a bit of game of bowling and so on. Yeah. But again, uh, you know, these are special people. Again, a lot of it could you could. Go, go back to inequalities in society and so on. Yeah. The reasons for their uh, prisoners and uh, for, the, for, the, for the reason for the prison. So what they do, they we provide them well. I, despite the sacrifices today, and we're operating on the great uh, pers- uh, pers- uh, constraints as regards personnel. I have a full time priest up in the Cork prison. You know. Because I regard that as so important. All right, listen. You know, I, I would be very concerned Neil, about the shortage of priests because, you know, if what the doctor says in a parish or what the doctor says in, in, in a hospital, you know, if our parish, if our hospital can be without a priest when the doctor says, there's no more that I can do. But there are less masses than ever before. And in rural Ireland, and I know this certainly in West Cork and Kerry, there are many different parishes sharing one priest and they have to rotate there the mass that, over yeah, a monthly period. It, that's true, Neil. Neil that's the, the, the problem that we'll be facing in the years ahead, sadly. And I think they still need the priest. There was certainly at special times, particularly at the time of sickness, at the time of death, and at the time of bereavement. I find out at funerals and so on. You know, they need every possible support. They need spiritual support. Hence the need for the priest. All right. I mean, I asked you the question already. You said it's Jesus' teaching. I, I don't know. You know more about that than I do, where Jesus would have said that homosexuality or, or divorce or women priests is not allowed. But you say he did say all of that, did he? Yes, it was, it's, it's, it's implicit in his teaching, his okay. respect for marriage and so on, you know. Okay, listen, um, I hope that you have a wonderful day today down at Kinsale with the boys and girls. Is it confirmation today, is it? It's confirmation. Confir- oh, yes, I only do confirmations. Yeah, I don't do it for schemings. Okay. Only right. confirmations. Well, and at this time, we'll remember also a, a great friend of mine whom I trained in hurling, uh, Frank O'Brien, at this time. Misfortune. Is it probably coming up to an anniversary of Frank's death, yes. isn't it? No, we had the Golden Jubilee of the Hearty team last Friday night. From Farron Ferris? Yeah, uh, uh, Farron Ferris, uh, the, 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 the Imperial Hotel. He won a Hearty 50 years ago. They we had the Golden Jubilee celebration, and poor Frank was very conspicuous by his. Ah, uh, sure. We were all, we all heartbroken. He was a producer on this program for many years. So yes, we, he was indeed. We, we lost another great sports journalist last week in the shape of Pat McAuliffe, who also. And I knew Pat extremely well. Also, Pat was a lovely man. He was a lovely man. Was, and yeah, so, yeah. and so are you, Bishop. And so are you. But just before I let you go, Paddy O'Brien just wanted, on behalf of us all, on behalf of us all, let us say, to pay tribute to Paddy. Good morning. Um, good morning, Neil, and good morning, Bishop. Good morning, I just want to say very shortly that Bishop Buckley is a great and loved, respected man in this country. And the thing is, there's that thousands of people in this country never, never in their lives in this city rather than country spoke to a bishop until they met Bishop Buckley. The funerals, uh, nursing homes, uh, if he's passing if he's passing a church, he sees a crowd, he pulls up, whether there's a wedding, a christening, or a funeral. He's a wonderful man. And I'll always remember... Um, I was the first person I had the honour and the privilege of introducing him to the public. Bishop Buckley was consecrated bishop on a Sunday, the 29th of April, 1984, and then three hours later, four hours later, he came to the Opera House. And um, I introduced him that night, and I said, everybody on stage tonight is over 60 years of age. My first person on stage tonight has to wait 16 years. Bishop Buckley was 44 Did years Did he sing of age. that night? 
he didn't sing that nice, no, when he went down home to his parents and he sang down there. But I want to tell you something funny that was at a car, I told this homeless times to people. We met out at the back of the Opera House and there was a photographer there, Dennis Menahan. I approached uh, Bishop Buckley, I kissed his ring, my Jenna Fleckett. And then Dennis, Dennis did the same thing. He kissed his ring. He genuflected. And getting up, the straps of the camera tripped him, and Dennis fell down the ground. And standing there very serious, Bishop Buckley said, Dennis, come off the floor. There's no need to kiss my face on this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's missed the nursing homes. I just left nursing homes, and they'd say, Bishop Buckley was here yesterday. He was here last night. I go up to the centre and watch the old people. Like, will, I, there's a lovely bishop coming. To, to Cork, Bishop Fenton Gavin, a great man. But he has a tough role to play. To he has big shoes to fill, I think, is what you're yeah, saying. And he has attended, Bishop Buckley has attended practically every over 60s in the last 25, 26 how come years. He never, how, how come he never entered as a contestant? I hear he can hold uh, a tune. He told me, he'd, and his favourite song is My Indian. <laughs> My interview the last, but there were 40 verses and not a to sing, please. <laughs> Thank God I didn't ask him to sing it then. <laughs> yeah, every year, the semi final, brought the semi final, and the final, he would come backstage and speak to the contestants, and they're all looking for a little blessing for him. And I know you're going to be in but I'm delighted when I heard he saying you're going to keep up the great work he's doing. And he highlights that very important thing that's close to me about loneliness, uh, visiting nursing homes. Any part of the country, I'd go down the city, whether it's East Cork or West Cork, they say, the bishop, that he just, just run as the bishop, the bishop is here. Oh, I know. And we were lucky to have a great man like him. I remember some years ago that he was interviewed. And he was said to him, Bishop, to fall off with children with mass young people. And um, he, he said, what do you think? He said, look, not because the young children are not going to mass now. They are very good people. And he said, I thought, the children now, I think, could be better than the children years ago. Not because we can judge a person. I think that was lovely of, of a bishop. Okay, so in, spi- in spite of whatever transition the church is going through, he's still a man of optimism. Exactly. And yeah. very, you know, he's, he's, Bishop Buckley's great sense of humour. I spoke... I, I spoke to Bishop Buckley on a Saturday night uh, before he was consecrated bishop. And I remember my mother was ill and I was staying with her that night. And I rang the bishop at 11 o'clock, making arrangements about the Opera House the following night. He was being consecrated bishop. And I would always call Bishop Buckley. I'd always call, him years. I'd always call him Father, Father Buckley. So I said, Father, after we had our plans, I said, this is my last time calling you Father. Because tomorrow after consecration, I'll be calling you Bishop. No, Paddy, he said, you would have to call me your Holy Father. Thanks very much, Paddy. Neil, P- Paddy, has, he, he has reinflated my sagging ego. Oh, man, yourself. And you deserve all of it. And I'll let, let you get on, because you have a busy itinerary ahead of you this morning. But I think Paddy is right when he says that the bishop-elect has big boots to fill. So thank you for taking the Thanks, call, John Buckley. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks, Neil. And do look after yourself, as always. The one and only... Uh, Bishop John Buckley, uh, who hands over the mantle to Bishop-elect Finton Gavin of Dublin, and uh, from Dublin, but will be become the diocesan boss down here, and no doubt uh, we will have an opportunity to talk to him in the future. But uh, I, I have great time uh, for Bishop Buckley, and I think I think many many people do, whether you are of the Catholic faith or no faith at all. Uh, he's a very embraceive individual. Uh, big f- and I think he, he summed it up there when he was talking about the church is getting its act together. Uh, maybe it had to fall before it could be rebuilt again on uh, better foundations. I don't know. Who am I to say? Back after the break, text 0868104106. The Neil Prenderville Show.